you go to order a meal and you have two choices for an appetizer, three choices for an entree, four choices for dessert. How many different meals can you have if you choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert? Okay, so the reason they call this a multiplication counting principle, I'll show you why that is. One way to look at this is to make a tree diagram. So you have three choices, actually I'm sorry, two choices for an appetizer. So it'd be like this. You can either go down this route or this route, right? Then once you pick your uh, appetizer, you've got three choices for an entree. So you could say, okay, I'm gonna pick one, two, or three, one, two, or three, depending on which route you go, right? Then you've got four choices for dessert. So you could go one, two, three, four, 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 right? So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You can either go down any of these branches and you're gonna end up at one of these endpoints over here, right? But you can see that if you have a lot of choices, this could quickly grow into a gigantic tree. It would take you a long time to draw it all out, et cetera. So the shortcut is what you do is you look at each level here and you say, you know, how many choices are there at each level? Well, you can see I've got two choices for the appetizer, three choices for the entree, four choices for the dessert. And if I multiply those out, you can see I'm getting 24, which is the same number of endpoints we have here if we were to count all these one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, add all those up, we're gonna get 24. But this is a lot quicker, just multiply them together. Okay, let's go through another example, but before I do that, this concept here, this multiplication counting principle or the fundamental counting principle, is something you wanna know for the ACT and the SAT. So if you're preparing for those two tests and you want additional help preparing, you like my teaching style, check out my huge ACT math review video course and my huge SAT math review video course. We go through a number of different concepts with explanations, sample problems, opportunities for you to practice, going over those key concepts that the makers of those tests want you to understand, want you to know. So definitely something to, uh, to check out. Take a look at the three free previews. I've got three free previews for each course. So you can take a look at those and those will benefit you and then you can go on to get the course from there. So I'll have a link in the description for that. Let's go to example number two though. It says, how many words containing three letters can you make out of the letters in the word math, right? Assuming that letters cannot be repeated. Okay, so another way to look at this is like, you know, imagine if you had these letters in a hat, right? So here's M, A, T, and H, right? And so you're gonna pick these letters out of a hat. So just imagine you're reaching in, they're all different letters, okay? So you just reach in, you say, well, how many ways can I pick that first letter, right? So I'm trying to make a three letter word. And you can see, well, I've got four choices, so that's gonna be four. Once I pick that letter, right, I can't use it again because it says it can't be repeated. So how many choices are then for the next letter? Well, you're gonna see there's gonna be three choices for that next letter, right? And then when you go to reach for that third letter, how many choices are left? Well, there's only gonna be two left. So now if you multiply those together, you can see there's gonna be 24. And so there's 24 different words that you could make, three letter words, with the uh, letters M-A-T-H. So this happened to be a coincidence that they came out to the same you know, uh, number, but uh, that's how you would work with it. So look at how many choices there are at each, you know, and then multiply them together. 